All right, so what we're doing today is we're gonna have the first corporate sprint. What is this? The goal is this week to get everyone in the corporate system playbook to get their holding company established. So I'll be on live Sunday today, and I'll be live Tuesday and Thursday to answer your questions so you can get your holding company set up. Because as we're about to talk about in this video, it's very, very important for you to do that. You can go ahead and get into the Corporate Citizen Playbook. The link will be below in the first comment. It'll be in the description box. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about a very real portrait of setting up a holding company. I have observed many entrepreneurs who literally have made they're setting up their businesses much more complicated than it needs to be. I would hear, like me personally, I do not write out a check at the end of the year into the Internal Revenue Service because I pay my taxes throughout the year because, call me crazy, but writing out a six-figure check that's enough to make you want to punch grandma in the face. I mean, that, 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 that's, that's hard. That's hard. And just some that I don't want to do. But one of the things that when you shoot your shot and you set up your holding company, you are making a determination that you're going to start more businesses. This is where I understand that Many entrepreneurs are on this. I'm going to start this one business, right? I'm going to start this one business, and then that's all I'm going to do. And they live and die by that one business, where automatically, when you set up a holding company from jump one, because this is one of the things that um, I have learned. Let's go ahead and talk about getting business credit. And this is one of the reasons that I had to adjust my holding company because every time I went in for an enhanced line of credit, six figure line of credit, we would have these conversations. The banker was like, I need to talk to the underwriters. And you know, that's been removed because I have a new holding company that uh, I will probably deploy in July. It's already has a holding company or has the EIN. In July, I'm going to sell all of my current companies to this new holding company, just to be simple. But let's, let's just have a conversation here. Uh, because I have multitude of companies, because uh, essentially, at the moment, I think it is seven, but I'm not sure, because some of these companies, like the car rental company, that's going to be shut down. That's not going to be activated anymore. But I want you. I want to go ahead and give you a theory. Uh, the multitude of my companies are over two years old, right? And recently, I took one of those companies that I formed for another reason, and I went to the bank and I walked out with seventy-five thousand dollars line of business credit for a business that ain't making no money, but it has. It's over two years old. And this is one of the things that you don't hear in these conversations about getting business credit. A lot of times the bank wants you to be two years old. And what I have a feeling that's going to happen is that it's going to get extended. That's going to be a bigger thing in the future. So one of the things that you need to understand, and I, I want you to sit here and think that if you went ahead and you enrolled in the Corporate Citizen Playbook, and you listened to all the lessons that I had, and the things I would teach you, in the future, you would be developing companies, the corporate structure. Let's talk about that. You would be developing the corporate structure of companies that don't exist. You would go ahead, get an LLC, you would get your EIN, and I would say maybe get a free checking account. Mercury is a free checking account if you needed that. And just work on your holding company. 
have that. Well, actually, your holding company doesn't do any work. Your holding company is a manager of your companies. So work on your first operating company and then go ahead and set up some additional future strategically holding company. Because here's the thing. You go ahead and set these holding companies up. You put yourself in the position to get funding that's going to be because like once again, uh, I, I will share this with you. Whenever I go into a bank and I talk about business credit, they always ask me, what do I do? What is my NIC code? And what are the funds for? And how much money, even on a non-documented situation, they ask how much money the business makes. And because I've been through this so many times, I'm well acquainted, I'm well aware of what to say, how to govern myself. And what's, you're going to ha what's going to happen is, and this is one of my things that I think is going to happen, um, because there are so many people out here talking about how to set up business credit. That is a theme. That is a conjuring up. And there's all these people out here talking about how to sub business credit, how to get business credit funding. How many of these folks are actually talking about how to set up and operate a business? How many people are talking about that? Because that's one of the things that I push. And that's one of the things that we're going to get into in the next half of the corporate citizen playbook on how to start your business, how to, actually get your first customers because this is one of the reasons and I found this to be really really interesting uh, today I was on Zillow and I saw a fully furnished house for rent for $28,000 per month which is about a third of a million dollars a year in rent so two years renting this joint you could have paid cash for a house very nice house and I saw a lot of fully furnished houses for rent. I mean, I've never like literally today I found like 12 in one day and I was sitting there like, and then I came across this video talking about why a lot of Airbnb owners are going to be selling their properties because many of these Airbnb owners did not get in at the low interest rates. And some of them have these DSCR. I know you'll correct me in the comments these loans that operate on how much income the property makes. And essentially a lot of Airbnb sellers are going to be selling their properties because I see, you know, I'm going somewhere with this. So stick with me. If these people knew how to get their own customers, it would be a different ball game. And this is one of the things that we're going to get into is how to get your customers. And back in the day, I got my customers. I'm going to use this remote as the phone. Hello, sir. Hi. Uh, I understand that you're moving. And what we do is we sell office furniture. And I want to schedule an appointment with you. That's how I got my customers back in the day on the phone. Cold calling, setting appointments. And, I, you know, I've, I've talked about this before as, you know, cold calling, personal, like I, I will share this with you. My Verizon phone, I have a Verizon phone and I have an AT, I have a uh, AT&T phone. And whenever I call, cause I actually use my Verizon phone to call my AT&T phone and it actually had my name in there. It actually had my name in there. And I was like, Whoa, that's interesting. And then my AT&T phone, which is a corporate phone, um, it has the name of the corporation for that phone number. And one of the things that I'm going to do at some point this year, and I'll, I'll explain to you because this is the beauty of having a holding company. And this is the beauty of knowing how things work because, um, I actually did this in a live webinar. If you go to the Google machine and put your name in and your name and address, more than likely you will find your name and address in the Google machine because of something called public records and public records in your credit cards. Things are very, very closely related. So one of the things that's going to happen for me is I, when I move from here, I'm going to get rid of 
my public record. Now, this is one of the things that you have to understand how the major credit bureaus work and the sub-credit bureaus work. There's the three majors, there's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Those are the major credit bureaus. Well, there's another group of credit bureaus that work very close with the major credit bureaus, and this is how your address ends up in, do you know when you buy a house in your name, that's a public record. Anyone who knows your address can go to the internet and find out who lives in this house unless it's under the name of a LLC. And this is something that's really, really interesting. I've noticed that a lot of these million dollar properties are in the names of LLCs in the, the address of the LLC is like in another state or something. It's very, very interesting. And one of the things that being a corporate citizen, being a holder of a holding company, one of the things I've learned is privacy is going to be very, very important going forward. So in the future, uh, also, you're not going to be able to um, know what companies I own because my name will be off of the, the public record. You will not be able to know where I live because I'm going to pull myself off of public records and, you know, with my credit cards. And this is something I'll be talking about in the Corporate Citizen Playbook. And another thing that I'm going to do is set myself up to be corporately invisible. And I will be able, and there's some stuff that's going on with business credit there. You've got to sign a document with your name and stuff. I have figured out a way around that because I already know it's coming because one of the things that I, I'm getting ready to do is make some major, major moves that was induced by my holding company knowledge. Because, you know, I want you to think, you go ahead, you enroll in the corporate citizen playbook, and then two years in the future, you go out and get some amazing amount of business credit because you followed the training and instructions. Because here's the thing, and this is the honest truth. I can only prepare you for the future. If your life is kind of crappy right now, and if you've got money problems right now, the training that I have can help you solve that in the future. <clears throat> When I first started, let's go ahead and talk about YouTube. I started YouTube August 6th, and I started making money from YouTube September, towards the end of October. Now, why did I start making money from YouTube in October, even though my channel wasn't monetized? My YouTube channel wasn't monetized for almost, it's like two and a half years because I knew how to sell. I knew how to present stuff. And this is other things that you will learn in the Corporate Citizen Playbook because what I feel that uh, July is gonna be a massive month for the Corporate Citizen Playbook because this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on the Corporate Citizen Playbook and I'm gonna work on the YouTube course all of July. There probably will not be anything new coming out in July and the new stuff will come out August. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand is the mindset and the mentality of being a corporate citizen. Once you go ahead and establish your holding company, this means you already have the intention mentally to start multiple businesses. And this means that you have the intention to create multiple streams of income systematically, step by step. This gives you so much power because once again, I've seen many, many people online who have not set up their corporation correctly. And I can tell you that they're paying way more in taxes than they have to. So we're going to have a, corp a holding company boot camp, holding company boot camp, teaching all the things you need to do to get it all set up. And I'm going to say this, the holding company, the business structure, the business credit, that's not, that's important, 
but it's not as important as setting up the company that makes money. And this is one of the things that I consistently see here on the internet. Uh, I will call them the side hustle YouTubers. And you'll have your, your favorite YouTuber, they'll come on the screen and it's like, hey, you can do this side hustle and make a lot of money. And they always talk about the back end of the side hustle. They never talk about the customer acquisition aspect of the side hustle. You could do this thing, you could do that thing, you could do that thing. How are you going to get customers for this side hustle? How are you gonna get customers? How are you gonna find customers? How are customers gonna find you? That is the most important thing of virtually any side hustle. How do you get customers? And one of the things that I'm gonna see, and I'm gonna make this prediction, in 2024, you're gonna, you're gonna see a lot of this Airbnb training just disappear because you have so many people at the moment who are losing massive amounts of money on Airbnb because they do not know how to get their own customers. They have not a clue how to get a renter. And then what they're doing, and like I said today, I, I found 13 houses for rent, 13 fully furnished houses. And I'm gonna say something. If I was to do Airbnb, I would be spending thirty and forty thousand dollars furnishing my Airbnbs because they would be decked out and tricked out. Why do I say that? The majority of the Airbnbs I see, the furniture is trash. It's just trash. I mean, it looks like some something that someone just threw together, and I'm just sitting there like, there ain't no way in hell I would even stay in a place like that. So. One of the things that you're going to see is with the proper business structure, with the proper setups, the proper protocols, the proper things to set up your business, the proper things to do business from a higher standpoint, the proper thing to go ahead and set up your business in a much better situation because Right now, I am seeing like if you're trying to sell art on Etsy, because uh, one of the things I've noticed is, and I'm going to say this, that the majority of business training on YouTube is put out by people who have very thin business experience. I mean, very, very thin business experience. It's like, hey, I've been doing Etsy for 30 days and I want to talk. I'm like, once again, you, you're, you're being seduced by that quick money, which at the end of the day ain't really that quick because here's the thing, and this is something that I have um, kind of struggled with because I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that you can go ahead and get this business started in three months and be making $30,000 a month. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, that's, if I had those kind of tricks, I'd be charging 50K for my course. I don't have any of those tricks. What I can tell you is you will be properly trained with the paperwork in the framework. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, one of the big issues that so many people have is, especially with getting higher lines of business credit, if you have a good credit score, you can get a, a, a business credit card and you can get a small line of credit pretty easily. Uh, I would say, and this is something else too, I had a line of credit that I recently applied for, I got approved for it, and then they came back and they asked me for documents, which I sent in. Because I had the documents. So what you're going to see in the future is going to be really, really hard for someone that has a business that is not truly a business to get significant business credit. I'm talking about $30,000 and up credit card limits. And I'm talking about lines of credit because, you know, it used to be you can get up to 50,000. Uh, Wells Fargo has a program that's going on and another bank has a program that's going on. 
and this stuff is always changing. It's always changing. So today you can walk into Wells Fargo, open up a business checking account, get a business credit card and do the right things. And three months later, get a line of credit. That's right. Now, one of the things that's going to happen, and this is, this, this, <laughs> this is why you got to have a business that make money. So you will not be desperate for business credit because, uh, like I said, there's a whole cottage industry predicated on getting business credit without actually running the business without actually creating a business that generates cash flow. That's one of the things that you will learn in the corporate citizen playbook, how to create a business that generates cash flow. And th this, this is one of the things that I've become really good at because you know, once again, this is a phone. This is not a remote. This is a phone. I started off in the trenches and I'm going to say something. I had established and successful businesses before I came to YouTube. I want you to say that. And I actually had to, you know, use my phone, use my phone, had to make, I don't, I have no clue to how many cold calls I made. I have no clue to how many appointments I went on. So I have built businesses in the good old days and I have built businesses in the new days. And we're going to get into a lot of training, especially with the YouTube course, because there, there's some, like, there's some things that are going on with YouTube that are just amazing. Small channels are being pushed. Like I have never seen before. They're really, really being pushed. And YouTube is introducing some new tools because right now I'm running some tests and I'll be talking to my YouTube people about the things that you can do. Cause right now I'm running a test that is kind of blowing my mind. It's, it's literally blowing my mind, um, how well this thing is working. And I'll be doing an update on that in the YouTube course, because if this thing works out the way that it's looking like, cause I, I once again, I've only been testing it for two days. So I'm going to need about a month of testing to really come out. But, um, it's, it's working. <laughs> it is working. And the thing is with the, the corporate citizen playbook, starting and setting up your YouTube business. So many people don't know how to do this. And this is one of the things that I will hundred percent train you how to do because it's one of the things that I have done and, you know, just go ahead and cast up in the future. I have one car that's in the business name. And I have another car that's in my personal name. Now I could turn around and put that car in my business name if I wanted to, but let's go ahead and talk about a year from today. Let's talk about next June. Next June, I will probably have another business car. I will be living anonymously. You will not be able to Google where I live. You will, you know, and like where I live now, you can Google it, but you can't get upstairs because we have a doorman. But I really, really have taken thought in consideration of the hidden company and having the hidden life. Because once again, you, you have no clue to how much public records mess you up in this internet age. And we will be doing a lot of stuff. But a year from now, I'll have probably another corporate car I would probably have another corporate address. I'm going to be doing a lot of things and I'm going to let my students know how I'm doing these things and how to properly structure and set this stuff up because, you know, um, I'm excited for 2024. I'm very, very excited for 2024. I know we're just at the middle of 2023 but I'm excited for 2024. I'm excited for 2025 and I'm excited for 2026 because I have plans to use my corporate knowledge to facilitate things because, uh, once you go ahead and, you know, just, Ooh, grab on to setting up a holding company and setting yourself up properly. You, you just set up yourself in such an amazing way 
that it's 100% beautiful. It's 100% crazy the things that you can do. Because, like, I had a company that doesn't make any money, and because I knew how to set that company up, I went ahead and got $75,000 worth of business credit. And because I have a real business with tax returns, I was able to keep that line of credit when they asked for tax returns. Because I set it up, and then two days later, I got an email, and it's like, hey, for your recent, we actually need to see this. And I don't know if I just slipped through the cracks, but once again, banks are always changing things. Banks are consistently changing things. So once again, this is another thing that's going to happen in the corporate citizen playbook. I'm going to consistently update that as I get new knowledge because things are consistently changing. They're always changing. So that's another thing, you know, once you go ahead and get in and like the people who got in really early are going to be glad that they did. And because there, there's so many things that we can be able to talk about, because uh, like I said, July is going to be really, really hot in more ways than one, because teaching you how to get customers, that is the missing ingredient because uh, I, I'm consistently seeing people who want to do stuff for free, who don't want to spend any money, who just like want, once again, getting customers is an expensive proposition. It's expensive in time. It's, it can be expensive in money. So it really depends on how yourself this stuff is set up. And one of the things that I'm going to do with the YouTube course is teach people how to set up a proper YouTube business. Because at the moment, I'm only posting content on this channel, and I will tell you exactly why. My issue is I have three monetized channels, but my main issue is that they all have the same audience. They all have the same audience. That's problematic because whenever I put up content that the audience doesn't like, they don't watch it because I have the same audience. And once again, with this channel, I'm doing a lot to this channel behind the scenes that I'll be discussing with my YouTube the people in the Corporate Citizen Playbook as we get into the YouTube course. Uh, there, there's, there's some things I'm doing. There's some things that are, I think, are game changing. But once again, I will need 30 days of data to accurately say that. And the things that you're going to be able to do in the setup, because here's the thing. You know, YouTube is saturated with dumb stuff, but YouTube is not saturated with specially niche stuff and it's not saturated with high quality stuff. It's just not. So there's tons and tons of room to grow. And this is one of the things that we'll be talking about in the YouTube training as we get into setting this up and setting all of these things up. Because when you as a person makes the decision to set up a holding company, that means that you're looking at today and you're looking at tomorrow because um, the things that I'm going to be able to do, because let's see, the first leg of this starts, I'm going to say next month because I'll be able to do some things from a corporate structure next month because, um, and then I'll be able to do some stuff from a corporate structure in August. And like I said, I got so many plans and I'll be sharing this and I'll be having some impromptu webinars for the corporate citizen playbook talking about these plans and these structures. Because when I told people that you can go to the Google machine and you can find out where you live, that shocked people. And this is one of the things that we need to understand in the world that we live in today because I was watching a news story on the internet because I don't really watch the news. And this lady, she was driving down Highway 78 near Stone Mountain and she got into a road rage and this dude just started shooting at her. So we live in a really, really crazy world with people who are reckless, people who have little to no regard to your personal life. They just don't. And this is why setting up a hidden company, setting up a hidden business is going to be the best thing. And one of the things that I also thought about doing is 
creating new companies because this could be on the, the game plan because this is why I'm waiting to July, but I may go ahead and create new companies for my holding company situation because um, there's one company, there's, there's two companies that are really active and they have money going through them. So I got to really think about that. I got to really think about how I'm going to proceed and how I'm going to move because now I found myself in the position of being someone who has established businesses and companies. And I have the question is, do I sell this business to my new holding company or do I create a new business for my holding company and just move that business into the new business? Um, one of the things it would be rather difficult to do some of those things because of the way that it's got set up. So there's two that I'm going to have to sell and I'm probably going to create some more new ones. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on. So join me tomorrow, 5 PM. We're going to be doing training Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Sunday, 5 PM, Tuesday and Thursday, 7 PM for getting these holding companies set up. Cause I really want you to go ahead and get that set up because get your holding company set up and get your operating company set up. And then we're going to learn how to get you customers, how to set up a business that makes money. That's going to be game changing stuff for you because this can change your life. This really can change your life. All right. My name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video.